25 years ago here in this great New York Public Library, the judges of the National Book Award for Fiction gave the prize to Don DeLillo's White Noise. Don went to the podium. I'm sorry I can't be here tonight, he said. <laughs> Don says little in public. It's what he didn't have in common with Norman Mailer, though there's plenty that he does. Uh, Don's language is on the page, his sentences as recognizable as Jackson Pollock's congested drips or Rothko's edged rectangles serve the novel, which he has called counter history. Don DeLillo was born in the Bronx in 1936. When he was 18, he had a summer job as a park attendant. He was told to wear a white shirt and brown pants to carry a whistle. He never got the uniform. He sat on a park bench disguised as an ordinary citizen and read Faulkner, Hemingway, Joyce. Maybe he read The Naked and the Dead. Through Joyce, he says, he learned to see something in language that made him feel the beauty and the fervor of words, the sense that a word has a life and a history. He likes a word within a word, the raw sprawl of the city. DeLillo published his first book in his early 30s. In the four decades since, he has written 15 novels and a story collection. He has imagined with wiretap verisimilitude the voices of terrorists, artists, fantasists, of global executives and nuns, haunters of the fringes of our culture and those real life, larger than life figures who were magnets for Mailer too. Lee Harvey Oswald, J. Edgar Hoover, Father Meinhof. DeLillo is a master of the list. He names 11 parts of the shoe, the contents of the station wagons in, at college drop-off, the infinity of things Sister Edgar in the Angel Esmeralda must disinfect to be germ-free. I want to read one DeLillo list that Mailer would love. I think he might envy. Um, the Lincoln moved out behind an unmarked pilot car and five motorcycles manned by white helmeted city cops showing traditional blank faces. Stretching half a mile behind came the miscellaneous train of rented convertibles, station wagon wagons, touring sedans, secret service follow-up cars, communications cars, buses, spare Chevys, Linden, Ladybird, congressmen, aides, wives, men with Nikons, Rolaflexes, newsreel cameras, radio phones, automatic rifles, shotguns, service revolvers, and the code for launching a nuclear strike. Don DeLillo has won many prizes in many countries, but this tribute in the name of a consummately American writer he admired and with whom he shared both language and territory is especially apt. Mailer and DeLillo have transformed American fiction. They live in the blood and muscle of our best writers today. 29 years ago, another ceremony in this library, a mouse ran under Don's chair and mine, so you might lift your ankles. Um, Don DeLillo, I think, is here tonight to accept the Mailer Prize for Lifetime Achievement.